Hi, Rebecca. It's so nice to see you today and be with you on the podcast. And I'd like to introduce you to everybody and tell how I found you and what we're going to be discussing. So Rebecca Zaltzman, is that how you pronounce it? Zaltzman? Zaltzman. Zaltzman, yeah. Okay. Rebecca Zaltzman is from Balagan Gone, which is a fantastic um, tool. I would call you a tool. <laughs> <laughs> you might not like being called a tool, but a tool is <laughs> you have a very helpful thing to give out. So instead of me telling everybody what you do, first, let me just say that this is the Start the Week um, show from The Uplift. And my name is Khani Shraibhand, and I'm um, talking to Rebecca. So Rebecca, could you tell us a little bit about what you do and what I meant by having a tool? <laughs> uh, well, first of all, hi, Khani. Thanks for having me here. Um, I'm Rebecca Saltzman. I'm a personal organization expert, and I help people clear their clutter and clear their mind. And sometimes I help people in their personal life, and sometimes I help people organize in their business. And I also teach people how to reduce their waste overall. And uh, I am the author of Organized Jewish Life. That's very me good. in a nutshell. Very simple <laughs> and very good. And very... Okay, so Rebecca, you're really based in Israel, but you do this all over. You, know, you do it by Zoom. So it's not something that you have to be based in Israel to access. Am I right? Correct. So I'm based in Israel. I'm American, but I'm based in Israel. And basically what I did was I started an online decluttering group because I realized I can't be everywhere all at once. And I wanted to help the most people. So I started these online decluttering groups that are in real time. So we actually declutter like while you're on the call, it's a three hour call. There's two calls. There's a three hour call and a one hour call. You can choose which one you're on. And during that time, we declutter together in a group and I walk you through exactly what to do in your space. And I'll give you advice. Like if you need to rotate something, you know, 45 degrees, I'll tell you to rotate it. If I, if you should put something in a different space, I'll tell you to put it in a different space. And basically I'll give you 15 to 20 minutes to do a task. And when you're done, I'll give you the next task. And everybody's functioning like that in the group. And the group functions in two ways. It does two things. The first is that you know that you're not alone because there are other people there with you doing the same thing. And the second good thing about the group is that it allows you to work with me in a way that is affordable, but also what it does in the long term is it actually improves your own executive functioning skills. See, if I'm standing there with you, helping you declutter in your home, a lot of times I end up just doing it for you. But when you are sitting there doing yourself, doing it yourself, and I'm just guiding you, it improves your executive function. So over time, you become better and better. And all those skills that you were lacking as a child uh, are, are going to start improving for you. And it might take time. And it obviously takes a little longer on a fully formed brain. But it really is an amazing, amazing tool for people who struggle with executive function, struggle with ADHD, struggle with just not knowing how to manage this problem on their own. Um, and it's really cost effective. And it is just the knowing that other people are there with you helps move you forward. And that's why it's such an effective program. program. And I'm going to say this now because I always before I interview anybody, I always make sure to check it out and see what it's all about. So I did check this out and I must tell you something. Now I'm a very, very neat. My house is like, everything is Masuda. I'm not the type to have, you know, lots of junk in my house. I'm, I'm really very good that way. But when it comes to stuff on the computer or st giving myself time to do an action, I'm not very good at that. So I came and there was a group of women and everybody was doing, um, one girl was doing her, her drawers, another girl was moving her, her main um, mess from her dining room to make an office in, her, in, an, in a spare room. So everybody was doing something else. And I really found the fact that you were able to give each of us what we needed Amazing. I personally set up something called Calendly, which has nothing to do with stuff in the house, but it has a lot to do with stuff in my brain. And 
I really found that marvelous. And I think the 10 minute, the way you worked it, you gave everyone a check in it every 10 minutes, which was to me, fantastic. Right. So you used it for business, which was great. And a lot of people use it that way. Um, and it doesn't really bother me how you use it. There's only one time during the year, there's like a six week period where I run themes on them, but most of the time I'm not running them in a themed way. So you can work on whatever area is really causing you pressure or disorganization or just a lot of not good feelings because it doesn't matter what you're working on. The point is, is that you have a set time and this is like the key to organizing no matter what. If something is not on your calendar, then it's not going to happen because you need to like set an official time and, and have some accountability to do something. So what this group also offers is that set time plus the accountability with also guidance and support. And the thing about decluttering just in general is that if you don't have guidance and support and you're not exactly sure what to do, it's not going to be something that feels like it's worthwhile to, to spend the time doing because it's, it's not going to feel like it's essential. See, most people are just, they're managing in their life and they don't realize how much better life would be if they weren't just coping, if they were doing better than just managing. And my goal is to really help people to stop just managing their life and to really move forward and and have a productive life reach your goals and spend time with the people you love and not spend your time on things that you don't love because that's not what we're here for we're not here to constantly tidy we're not here to constantly clean up after everybody else we are here for some greater mission and you can't fulfill what you were here meant to do what you're here to do if your house isn't in a state or your personal life or your business life or your affairs just in general are not in a state where they're organized because you're always focused on trying to get organized. 100%. And if you spend the time just getting organized up front right now, then later on it will pay off. A hundred percent. I think it's really important to actually bring out um, if a person has all this clutter around them and in any way, wherever it is in your life, clutter doesn't, like we said, clutter doesn't mean things, clutter means anything to what clutter is right. meant, right? So if we a person has a lot of clutter in their life, they cannot function properly. And that's a Correct. really, I mean, I you see it in, a, I mean, I've seen it anyways. I've gone into a person's house and everything is just all over the place. And you could see the person is not settled it sometimes comes up because the person is not settled that everything is, you know, all over. They can't control what's around them. And that's really important to make the time to sit down and get that clutter organized, whichever clutter it is. Am I right? You are a hundred percent right. And I'll tell you that even for myself, I find that like, I can see when I, when I need to, to refocus myself and I need to reorganize myself because I can see like things in my house start to pile up, decompose a little bit. Yeah. Like, like I can see like, Oh, but nobody's I mean, perfect. Yeah. Nobody's perfect. And like, there are times when I, I mean, I'm human. Like there are times that are stressful for me. There are times when things aren't going the way that I want. There are times when everything in life just feels overwhelming. And at those times I see like, that's when my organizational skills start to deteriorate a little bit. And I need to like push myself to start to tidy myself up again. Like, it's like, I can see like, Oh, I left my shoes here and my shoes there and my shirt there. And like, you know, for me, it's a lot. If you saw it, you probably wouldn't think it's much, but it's an indicator to me that like, things are, I got to get myself back on track. Right. So let's say, and, let, let's say, let's put ourselves in that scenario. Okay. Okay. You're the organizer. You do, everything is organized, but there are times that you're falling. So how do you get yourself back onto that track? Well, first of all, first of all, I live with other people. <laughs> you know, yeah. I have three kids. There are three teenagers and I have a husband who, by the way, is super tidy. So he's not really the problem, but like the kids, even though they know where things go, uh, you know, they're teenagers. Yeah. And the thing is, is like, I'm not saying we never have to tidy our house. We do. 
But the difference between our tidy and your tidy is that it not yours specifically, but generally you yeah, yeah, is yeah. that ours takes us 10 minutes because we know where everything goes. We don't have that much stuff to begin with. And it's chick chock when you know where everything goes and there isn't that much to do. For myself personally, when I'm going through periods of struggle and, and clutter, be, it's not really clutter as much as just untidiness. When that becomes an issue for me, I, the key there really is to just notice, say, oh, I notice that things are a little bit a slippy, not, not for lack of a better term, not misudar, which doesn't really have a great English translation, but not in not in order for, yeah. for really lack of a better term. And I notice when things are not really in order. And that's the key is noticing and saying to yourself, whoa, back up the bus, take a minute. I'm going to take 20 minutes and I'm just going to resituate myself. And I notice that when I do that, when I reset myself, I feel a lot better and I'm able to move forward with things that I might've been procrastinating on because a lot of times procrastination isn't just you don't want to do a task or you don't know how to do a task it's that your whole situation is just not feeling good so you're like I don't want to do anything so when I feel that way I look so I look for signs am I procrastinating on things is my house messier than normal and not just my house but my personal things that no one else can really be you know accused of making the mess of right and I look at myself and I say to myself like okay you're okay. You're not okay. And, and I take my, my internal temperature as it, as it were. And like, I force myself to be honest with myself. And I say like, I'm okay. Or I'm not okay. And I'm not saying that this is the answer for all life's problems, but I'm saying it is a big, big answer for a lot of people, for a lot of situations. And when I can just pinpoint it and say to myself, okay, I'm going to just take some time for myself. I'm going to organize myself. I'm going to put myself in this situation and I'm going to, I'm going to move forward. When I make that commitment to myself, it's a lot easier to, to get it done. And the key really is, is to give yourself the time. Because again, it's like what I said before, if you're just managing, if you're only coping, that's not the best case scenario. That is not a good way to live. It, in, it increases your stress hormone. It can cause you to gain weight. It's, it increases your worry. It just, it's just not a healthy standard of living. And besides for that, it doesn't feel good. No, that, that, that's it for sure. And, and like, I'm not saying you can be happy all the time. That is definitely not what I'm yeah. saying, but you can be happy more of the time and having less stuff and having systems and knowing where things go will help you be happy because I can't I, say it I, better I, than I, our sages. I our really sages do. teach us in Pirkei Avot. They're like more possessions, more worry. <laughs> exactly. You know, yeah. so like when you, when you take that to heart, it's not about what I want to point out is that it's not about being less. It's about having less and yeah. having less doesn't mean that you are less. I think also actually having less makes you more, more. I can't do you, I think that's having that's less to, makes you makes feel you, like you have more. Yeah. That is makes, 100% true. Feel, feel yeah. More. Because you feel more fulfilled when there's yeah. less responsibility. Yeah. 100%. Like, and the thing is, is you, you, everybody listening probably yeah. has enough responsibility as it is. Why do you want to add to your responsibility? Yeah. Decrease your responsibility by decreasing the amount of stuff you have and move on with your life. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. You don't need to, you don't need to have more to have a better life. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a capitalist consumerist mindset to think that. And I'm not Actually, opposed to capitalism today, or consumerism, but in just today's um, world where everything is so expensive. It's actually a really good plan to start working on this, not having so much because it, it helped, first of all, money-wise, it will help us all. But second yeah. of all, it, it, I think it, it just teaches you how to be more satisfied with what you have in your life. And that that's really important. I think, yes, I agree. But recession aside, yeah. I think what, what being satisfied with what you have 
and understanding that you don't need a lot of things to be happy or feel complete. Uh, I think what it does is it improves our relationship to God, actually, because feeling satisfied with what you have means like you believe that everything you have is it's from me. God and like that it's that he's giving you what you need and you don't need sure. more than that. And maybe, and maybe there will be a time when you do need something else and, and it's okay to ask for, or hope for those things. And actually, um, I don't think Judaism teaches us to not be materialist in, in, I, I don't think it's anti-materialism. No, I think no, that Judaism is right. That. Actually, in fact, for Yantif, you know, it says for Yantif that you should get something new. So it, it's not right. There's definitely right. the idea of Hidur Mitzvah and the idea yeah. of, of, of things that are, you know, special for Yom Tov. But even the Shulchan Aruch says that you shouldn't live in abject poverty. You shouldn't live in disgusting. You should have a home that feels beautiful to you. Yeah, definitely. And, 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 but there I think is... the beauty comes from knowing where everything is, from having, I think the beauty, from- that is true, but the beauty really comes for me in my mind from having a curated collection that is thoughtful and purposeful. It's not just buying more to feel, to feel the need inside because retail therapy is a thing yeah, and that- it, but shopping does can make you feel better because it hits the dopamine receptors in your brain. Yeah. But the thing is, is that it's not about just buying, 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 buying so that you have more stuff in your home. It's about making good, thoughtful choices about what you bring into your home so that when you walk into your home, you feel like, ah, Mahaya, right? Like, this is yeah, amazing. Let me ask you something. You know, just when you're talking like that, do you, did you, um, the Ma- you know, the Mary, what's her name? Mary Kondry? Or... Mary Kondo, yeah. Yeah, Kondo. I, I knew that there was some name with a K. I couldn't, forget, I couldn't remember the name. Is Do you ascribe to that way of... Okay, so first of all, I started my business before I even knew about her. Okay. I'll just say that. Um, over the years, she has changed her shita, her theory. Um, you can tell in her early works that she definitely didn't have kids <laughs> uh, because it's not practical. Her theory is just not that practical if you have children. I don't, in in theory, ascribe to her theory. Her theory, was ba- her theory is based in Shinto practice, which is basically a Vodazara. Yeah, so yeah. I don't, I don't ascribe to her theory. Um, what I do. And I, and I don't think that everything we have in our ho- home causes us joy. My, you know, rental papers or mortgage papers don't bring me joy, but I can't throw them out. My spatula doesn't bring me joy, but I need three spatulas because I keep kosher. Like <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't bring me joy, but these are necessary things. So the key is figuring out what is necessary and what is important in your life and then figuring out what you can do without. So for example, I love kitchen gadgets. Okay. I think that they're so neat. And I love the idea that it's like, Oh, one thing just to slice the avocados. But yeah. what I don't love is the amount of, of, resources that it takes to make these items, the amount of space that it takes up and that they're only good for one thing. So I encourage people to not focus on gadgets. I love them. I think they're cool. I think they're awesome. I'm like thrilled at people's ingenuity. And if you have a disability, oftentimes there are amazing tools for you, but if you don't have a disability and you're, especially if you're short on space, or even if organization is a problem for you, then limiting the amount of stuff you have is going to make being organized and taking care of your things a lot easier, but it's also going to force you to use the tools that you have in a more effective way. So for example, there's these cutting boards that I really like to use because they don't scratch a lot. They're, they're don't make my knives dull, but they're also heat resistant. So you can use them as trivets and finding things in your home that can do double duty that can do two things for you make your stuff work harder for you if you're gonna give it a piece of real estate make it work hard for you you know what i mean like that's what it's there for it's meant to serve you so make it serve you you know Um, that's really good i think i you know we're limited on time and i just i really want to bring out your book because i think that was (laughs) for me was a fantastic um, thing. You sent it to me recently. It is called um, Organized Jewish Life, the essential guide for planning Jewish holidays, events, 
and every day, Rebecca Chaifetz, oh, Chaifetz, I know that name, Zaltz. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I mean, not a, we're not live to see, but this is, you know, this is the book. Okay. And it's a substantial it's book. It's a fantastic it, it's, book. It has thank you. how many pages so that people realize what they're getting. We are talking without the, you know, the glossary at the end. We're talking. Uh, it's like 300 pages. Two book pages. So yeah. it's a substantial book. And I think what really, um, spoke to me is how you you go to so many different places that need organizing in life and it's not it's about how to make a yontif it's about um planning let's say you have here planning for sukkah you have somebody who is sitting shiva you have a right. woman i mean i i was really amazed you have planning for a wedding you have um here yeah, let's see we have here a paying a shiver call, tips for paying a shiver call. I think these were all, it's just so many things that you cover. <laughs> so let's first say, why did you write this book? I think that is the first step of Port of Call. What did this come from? Okay, so when, uh, in 2020, my mom passed away. And even though I grew up religious, and I knew that she was going to pass away soon, and I had read as many books as I could about death and dying, like in Halacha, I still wasn't sort of prepared for the reality of it. And I didn't get to sit Shiva with my family because I couldn't travel uh, because of Corona. So I ended up sitting Shiva by myself and my husband, thank God has also never sat Shiva. And, and even though we've participated in, in Shiva before, it's not the same when you have to do it yourself. Definitely. And what I wanted was a checklist that I could just hand off to my husband and be like, here are the things you need to take care of. <laughs> yeah. And he would have happily done it if he knew what to do, but he didn't know what to do. And I never want any, I never wanted anybody to be in that situation. So I decided that there is no reason why we can't have a checklist for every single scenario in Jewish life. Does it cover every scenario? No. Is it a guide to get you started for when you're in that scenario? 100%. It's going to give you the tools you need to ask the rub the right questions. It's going to give you the tools you need to ask the doctor, the insurance agent, the lawyer, the real estate agent, whatever scenario you're in, the, 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 the questions that you're going to need answers to. The same thing for when you're making a simcha. What do you ask the caterers, the DJ, the florist, the wedding planner? What do you ask those, those people? And how do you make sure that you're making an agreement with these people that is, you know, beneficial for both of you and fair and, and that you both understand what you're getting into in the agreement. And what I found was that there was no resource for women by women who, that could really tell you how to practically apply halacha in day-to-day -day life. So I sort of originally, when I, when I was writing it, I was like, it's Emily Post meets Mary Kondo. That probably dates me a lot by saying Emily Post, but Don't it's know Emily who Post that is. meets Mary Kondo, Emily right? Post. <laughs> okay. But, but really what it is, is it's a Kizar Shulchan Aruch for women. It's your guide to the Torah for how to practically apply the Torah. Because great, we all know that we have to make a Seder. We all know we have to build a Sukkah, but how do we organize ourselves with the demands of the modern women and a modern woman in 2022 to deal with our Jewish lifestyles? And if we don't learn that growing up, or if we did learn it, but we were always in the passenger seat and we don't know how to take control in the driver's seat, then how are we going to implement it? I mean, I, I knew how to make Pesach, but then all of a sudden when I moved to Israel and my mom wasn't doing it and we weren't going to her Seder, it was like, well, now I have to make all the decisions. So what do I do? So here are all the tools for you laid out in timelines with checklists of exactly how to do that. And I tried to really take into consideration both the Ashkenazic and the Sephardic customs and and as many other customs as I could find for whoever would talk to me and probably in the second edition I'll have more but like for now this is what I have are you um, hold on are you middle of your second edition not yet <laughs> uh, uh we have to get you on to it because it's, it's soon <laughs> but but you know like I really really tried to consider all the points of view but what really really got me um started is I actually um 
during the time that I was writing the book, I actually became a certified Kala teacher and a certified mikvah lady through the Eden Center here in Israel. And I'm actually certified by the Israeli ministry. Also, like I have, you know, certification. So um, what really, really put me into motion about this book and the, the part that I'm really the most passionate about it is in engagement and the mikvah and how to manage in your early stages in, in your marriage, because I feel like this is a area that is just not talked about at all. And it's important. It's important to know what to do. If you need a termination, it's important to know what to do. If you have a miscarriage, it's important to know how to deal with infertility within your marriage. It's important. And we don't give enough ink to this, to this cause this at all. Subject. And I think any and, of these subjects that are a little bit touchy, we don't give. Yeah. Them. But from women need a resource for this. And, 100%. and I wanted to give voice to those things that you can be organized around these situations and, 100%. and, and 100%. we need a voice for them. I think, I mean, I would tell anybody that you could, I would recommend this for a friend's gift, like Hanukkah's coming. Thank you. It's a great gift to give to somebody. It's, and it's a great guide for your own self to have yeah. it. I really, I found it really fabulous. I think you said that you Thanks, had like Bonnie. a workbook or something that goes. There's also a workbook that I, like a, a menu. It's, it's more like a, I call it the organized Jewish life Shabbat and holiday planner. It has checklists in it to help you get ready for Shabbos, but it also has place for meal planning, guest planning, budgeting, the times for Shabbos and a place for you to leave notes and recipes so that you're not creating, recreating the wheel every single week. You can go back to past weeks and just be like, okay, I'm going to use the menu from four weeks ago because I can get all of that food now. Um, or I'm going to, I'm going to next year on, on Hanukkah, I'm going to go back to this year's Hanukkah and I'm going to see what I made and here are all the recipes all in one place, ready to go. And I don't have to recreate the wheel every single year. That's really great. Okay. So I think we really got a, a good vision of what you're doing and, and, and definitely the book. And I hope, I hope we'll get you involved in the magazine because I think you have a lot to give us. So that's the next step. And, you know, I, I, I always say that any person who's listening to this, who feels that they have something to contribute to the Jewish, you know, Jewish women, they should really get in touch with us because we love, we love championing um, Jewish women's businesses and things that will help us. So that's, you know, on a separate note. And as usual, thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Rebecca. I'm terrible. Um, no, thank you're you very great. Much, Rebecca, for being part of this because I think we all could do with this in our lives. And as you said, it's it's about little things. It's not, you don't have to do everything at once. We could just start with little things and build up to the main um, the main event, which is that everything is in clearly in packets, put aside neatly. So that's really important to know. And I just really enjoyed speaking to you. And I'm really glad Thanks, you joined honey. Rebecca. And I'll see you all next week when we have another great guest who will speak about, and we shall see what she'll speak <laughs> about. Okay, I'll speak to you. Thank you very much for joining me, Rebecca. Thanks for having me, Hani. Okay.